Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to inspect your CSS and find out what things are so you can find out how to change them. Now, I would recommend having some basic CSS knowledge. We have a basic CSS series on Level Up Tuts that's 20 or so videos just to get you up to speed about how to make modifications to CSS and what it's exactly doing. All you need to know about CSS other than the syntax and the coding is that CSS is used to not only lay out the site but also choose the style, so the font size, the color, that sort of stuff. The actual data, the actual content in the way it's laid out in the code is going to be produced by the PHP, which uh, outputs HTML, which is read by a browser. Anything interactive is JavaScript stuff. Well, I should say almost anything interactive. At this point, you can do a lot of great transitions and animations with CSS, so I, I shouldn't leave that out because I, I myself am a big fan of that. So you may have seen in the last post, I quickly did something and I was able to determine that the reason why this background was white and not blue like we had told the body to be blue was because of a div that the style uh, or the class of page uh, or site, I can't remember, and it had a background of white. So. I want to show you how exactly you can do that. I'm using Chrome. If you're using Safari, you can do this as well. Same with Firefox, although the tools are a little bit different. And for Safari, you're going to have to turn on developers tools. You might want to Google how to do that. Uh, I would just recommend using Chrome because personally, I find their uh, developers tools to be way better. Um, and so for what we're going to do, let's say we want to change the size of all of our post text titles, right? This doesn't fit our fancy. Maybe we want this to be bigger for some reason, right? So what you can do is right click on this and then you'll have this inspect element right here. What this is going to do is either, uh, well, it's probably going to open up on the bottom for you. However, if you hold this little icon right here, you can get it to show up on the right side like mine. But what it does here is it shows you the HTML right here, and when you sort of hover over things, it highlights on the page what exactly you're hovering over. And you'll notice we want this, uh, it's, it's right now it's showing us the anchor text, and if we come down here, it's going to show us the CSS that's actually applied to that. Now we want to change the font size, and the font size is most likely going to be on this H1, which is a header tag. So if we click on this, you can see our font size is 33 pixels. Now one thing we can do is directly in the browser, click on this uh, on the 33 pixels so it's highlighted with blue and just tap up a few times and we can even test it to see what it's going to look like at a larger size. Now we want this thing to be pretty monstrous so 40 pixels is awesome for me. Now we can look at here what this class is. It's saying that this property is given by the class of entry title and it's on line 1068 of style.css. If we come to our CSS page, of course we don't have it here because we're importing this one. It's being imported from the 2014. So I've opened up the 2014 theme and I've gone to style.css and now the line I wanted to look at was 1068. So if I scroll down, you see the line numbers on the side here, and we can go to 1068. Now here's 1068, an entry title just like we saw had 33 pixels for the font size. Now at this point we have a choice we can make. We could exactly copy this entry title directly from this paste it into our CSS here, just like this, and modify this and say, hey, it's gonna be 40 pixels. Also, keep in mind, any modifications you make in the inspect element are non-permanent. If we were to refresh the page, they'd go away. However, since I just added that to our CSS file, if we refresh, you can see they actually are 40 pixels. And down here, we have two entry titles. We have the one from our style.css, that's the one we're importing, and we have this other one where we just modified it. So that's one option, right? However, you'll notice it's doing a lot of dumb things here. It's overriding all of this stuff, text transform, uppercase, margin, whatever, even though 
uh, we're not changing anything. So a better option would be if you're just changing the font size here, of course you could just delete everything here. I would encourage you to get used to doing things like looking at this, seeing that it's entry title, uh, coming in here and um, even writing your own CSS to get used to it if you're not used to writing CSS or if you are, just write your own CSS. Um, and it's just entry hyphen title, just like that. And inside of here, just because we want it to be something different, let's say uh, font size, uh, we want it to be 42 pixels, just like that. And we can save it. Now let's come to our post and refresh. Now you'll see that just the font size is overriding. We don't have unnecessary code, right? Because the best part about CSS is uh, you're supposed to do things dry. You don't want to repeat yourself, so you write as little code as possible, and that way it keeps things organized. So just like this, let's make a modification to the page or the site class that we saw before up top here. It's actually, if I click around, uh, it's this div right here and the class down here that we see is site and it has a background color of white. Now we want to change that to be just a off shade of white. So just like we did before, we use the class name that we saw and we can say site and we can have the background be something just off white. Um, we can have it be EEE, -E -E, which is just a next shade up of gray. And now I refresh. And our background, our page, uh, our site div is now, uh, has a background of this gray. Now, I don't really know what's going on here with why these have a white box, but let's find out. We can go ahead and right click just pretty much anywhere in here and click inspect. And it's gonna take us to the general region. From here, I can just start clicking around and I can see that the header has a background color of uh, white. You know, here's that. And all sorts of stuff in here is a background color of white. I'm not too sure why they did it this way. Uh, you know, there could be a lot of reasons. Um, but if you'll notice that that's from site content, entry content, uh, site content, entry summary. It's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So we would have to find each of these elements and override it. Um, for instance, Let's click on the header and we see it's site content, uh, sorry, site content entity header. So let's go and select this uh, class right here and we can just copy this right from inspect. Again, uh, let's put this below our entry title or maybe above our entry title but below site. Uh, how you manage your CSS files is something in itself. And for here, we're going to say background and we're going to write transparent. Now we refresh and this header no longer has the background color of white. Now to get rid of that on these other ones, we're gonna have to do that separately, but you now have the process of doing that and you can go ahead and find what they are. In fact, this is site meta here, uh, or entry meta. So I can go ahead and put a comma here and paste that one in. Now we can also find, uh, that was entry meta as well, entry content. So if I grab this whole bit right here, site content dot entry content, and do another comma and put that here. You notice we're now saying, all right, within site content entry header, within site content entry meta, within site content entry uh, content. Now, the reason why we have to have site content in front of the entry header class is that's because that's how it was coded in the style sheet that we're overriding. They wouldn't override that because how specific the parent theme is would override our sub theme. All right, so let's save this and refresh. And it looks like I must have missed something. Uh, oh, I had an extra comma here for some reason. And I'll save this, refresh. Perfect. So now we have this lighter gray background. We have no more background color on these 
uh, the entries or anything like that. And we've made some modifications. So this is a process that you're gonna to wanna to get used to because Chrome Web Developer Tools is something that I pretty much use all the time every day. It really helps you understand what's going on behind the scenes and it makes you way better at CSS and your coding languages. What you can even go to do is go to any site you want and look at how people are doing things simply by right clicking and inspecting it and then looking at the CSS. It'll teach you a lot about how other people make websites. Great, so now we've made some real advancements in our CSS for our website. We've now made some major modifications and while it might not look like much, you now have the power to effectively change anything on this site. That's pretty powerful uh, in terms of the styling goes. Well, in the next couple of videos, uh, we're gonna be going over some even more crazy stuff. We're gonna show you functions.php. We're gonna show you some template file stuff. We're gonna show you some PHP stuff. So keep on theming and, and check it out and make modifications, play around with it, um, and watch our CSS videos if you do not know CSS because uh, it's an absolutely uh, amazing uh, skill and tool to be able to use. Also, if you want more practice with CSS stuff, uh, Code Academy has a great CSS series and uh, you can go there and get some free training there as well. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. Let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to hear from you. There's also the Level Up Tuts forum. we love to hear from you on. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.